Hi folks, had so many uh, requests to show, go from uh, from A to B or from beginning to end on how I put together some of these cooler baiters. I've laid everything else out here. We're going to go through it step by step from beginning to end and hopefully that will help everybody out a little bit more on how to do this stuff. We're going to be installing the GQF um, backup thermostat for their um, sportsman. This is what it looks like whenever you get it, whenever it comes in the mail to you. This is what it's going to look like. And we'll go over how we're going to put it together. This really holds uh, temperature good. A lot of folks use a uh, water heater thermostat, but we'll cover that whenever we get to that point. Uh, we're going to use these standard light sockets right here. I've already taken this one out the cover right here. When you go into Lowe's, let me see what this thing, I believe this is called a, uh, it's a red dot. It's an outside lamp socket like this right here. These things cost Oh, they cost three to five bucks whenever you are uh, going to Lowe's or Home Depot. I like them because I can take the sockets out, like this right here. We'll, uh, when you pull them out of the package, you take this, see this Phillips head screw right here? You take this Phillips head screw out right there, and uh, as long as, it, and hold this thing up straight, and this socket will pull out of here, this is what you get. It's really, it, it, it installs neater, and, uh, and that's what I like about this, and it doesn't protrude, so whenever you mount it in your box, we'll put a hole, um, we'll take a hole saw, and we're going to cut two holes here, one for each one of our sockets, and we're going to glue them in here with some RTB, and they'll be flush with the box so that it's not taking up so much room inside of your, uh, inside of your incubator. Alright guys, uh, this right here, with um, all of my applications, this is an inch and a half hole saw that uh, you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. They usually run around nine bucks. It's worth the investment to get it. What it does is it cuts a perfect hole to mate for these uh, sockets to go into. Um, throughout the video, we'll be pausing and cutting out a lot of the boring stuff, like the actual labor of, of sawing holes or cutting and all that other stuff. We'll, we'll show the beginning of it or, or what it takes to do the stuff or how I do it, and then we'll be cutting it out to save time. But the first thing we're going to do is see how we're going to lay out the box. Give you a little bit of an idea of what all we're going to need. You're going to need the, um, this is for the fan. This is an 80 millimeter. Put my pencil down, you see a little bit better. This is an 80 uh, millimeter computer fan. Blue LED, it really doesn't make any difference. You can find them on eBay for a couple of bucks. You can get 10 of them off of eBay for 10 bucks uh, in, in some places. But this is what you need. You need a 12 volt DC inverter. I don't know if you can see that really good. I'll post some pictures on the video. But you see that your input is an AC 120 volt. Output is DC 11 volts. And this is what you're looking for on any of your inverters that you might get your hands on. I've got some, uh, like say you're in Goodwill or where you're shopping around, all of these all of these are inverters. All of these do the same thing, all three different sizes on this on the SEMA, you may be able to see a little bit better. You got a um you got an input 120 volt. May not be able to focus in on it, but what you want the most important thing is is your input input is 120 volts. Your output ranges from 9 to 15 volts. All of that is acceptable. The lower the voltage, the lower the speed the fan will run. All right, we're going to get ready to drill the holes on this thing. We're going to mark it out about where we want these. Uh, I, uh, whenever I put the, the sockets and the bulbs in here, we're going to put one is going to be one is going to be right around, right around in here. The other one we're going to put. Let me see. We're going to probably we're just eyeballing this, but we're going to put the other socket right about here. One of the, it's a little bit further uh, from the edge over here, but we do that because see, whenever you shut this, this plastic uh, strap goes down into the box, and you don't want that too close to your, your bulb. So that's about where we're going to put the uh, the sockets. And I put two in here instead of uh, a lot of folks put 160 watt or 175 watt. I put two low voltage, two 40 watts or uh, 38 watts in here. Re this is why, because in the event, and I've had it happen that one of these bulbs blows out in the middle of the night and you don't know that it's happened, that other bulb, it's not likely you're going to blow two at a time. If you do blow one bulb, especially when you're using this type of thermostat right here, it'll continue to hold temperature right where you need it. It'll just hold the bulb on longer to, uh, to keep your temperature straight. 
So we're going to pause here for a second and I'm going to get ready to uh, drill these holes and we'll come back and drill them. Alright folks, we've got the box turned around here and we've, we've um, joined up where we decided on the inside. I've marked it on the back side where I can see right here. I'll just put it next to where I can center up the hole saw. Show you how this works out. Now see, that's much better than trying to do that with a with a uh, jigsaw or something like that. That's twice as fast. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill the other one and we'll get right back to you. Okay folks, figured I might better make a point on this. You see here, here is the, here's the plug that's left over. You just take your little screwdriver in through the slots right here and just push this out. Then you can grab it by your hand and just pull that out of the way. Get right back to you in a minute. Okay guys, we got our holes drilled here where we marked show you what we're talking about when you take this light socket watch how it fits in this in that inch and a half hole like that right there we'll glue it in and see how neat that is it's neat well because we'll, uh, if you got little fingers with the little young ones I don't have that to worry about but there's a lot of folks out there that do um, I cap this off with some RTV over the top of that and seal up these joint or these these open spaces right here it's really hard but little teeny fingers could get on there and we don't want any young ones to get shot so I'm gonna flip this thing around and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to locate my RTV. I'm going to uh, flip this thing around and show you how we're going to get these things glued in here. And then we're going to move on to the next step. All right, folks. Whenever you get these out of the package, this is what they look like. And what you do, take this little screw out right here. It's not in there tight. It's actually a Phillips here, but I'm using a little tiny flat here. It fits in there good. There we go. Now, see this is loose. Now we're gonna try to work this out of here. Work the wires on down. See it's starting to come on out now. Work your wires on down, you get them, out it comes. Okay? That's the way you want it. That's what's gonna be left. You can do whatever you want to do with that. I, I hadn't thought of any use for that yet. Unless you put a striker in there and make a Christmas bell out of it. I don't know, that's not funny. Alright. Here we go. What you want here, and uh, we're going to put some sealing around this, but th and this is what I've got right here. This is black RTV. It's a gasket material, Permatex. You can get from Advanced AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any parts store carries this stuff. This is the fast drying black Permatex. Works really good, and it does dry fast. You better have it ready whenever you put it on there. So what you want to do is whenever you push your socket through here, this is about how much. You want about a quarter of an inch of this thing sticking out the front right there like this. And you see the back is just about flush with the back. So if you put it flush with the back on this particular cooler here, um, some of your uh, Coleman coolers, your really uh, what they call sub-zero uh, coolers, are a little bit thicker than these. And so you may, uh, you may have to modify it a little bit different, or it may be flush with the inside, or even countersink it. But it's, uh, just, you just make it work for you. I'm going uh, to get some glue set up on this thing right here, and we're going to see if we can get these things mounted, and I'll be right back. All right, guys. We've got a we got our bead of permatex put around the perimeter of this right here. Now I'm gonna see if we can. Now I ain't worried about you know it, this ain't a beauty contest, but we want it to get there. You go get I get this thing in here and twist it just a little bit like that to make that sealant catch. Don't matter if a little bit runs down or anything like that, but we want that thing flush with the back, just like that right there. Take my screwdriver. And I push that any excess sealant that's wanting to run down. We push up around this thing like this right here. Like that. It ain't got to be beautiful. That's going to dry in about 10 or 15 minutes. So what you guys get to do is just like have a little hyperspace jump here in just a minute. You'll come back. I'm going to get the other one uh, set up and get it mounted. And we'll be right back after this stuff dries to go to the next step. All right, folks. Next thing that we got.